So all these gas laws we've been talking about, um, well, they approach gases from an experimental type of or point of view. Now, what about theoretically? What's really happening with these gases? What do we think is happening? Well, we call that the kinetic molecular theory, KMT, kinetic molecular theory of ideal gases. Ideal gases, if you've got gases that are just a little less than, say, one atmosphere of pressure, all gases on the planet behave, behave pretty much the same way, ideally. So what are some of the, uh, what are some of the uh, postulates that we come up with to describe these gases now? Well, first of all, we believe that, and we, I'll say we believe that because, remember, we can't see these things. So this is what we're thinking is happening based on all the experimental data we collect. Particles of gas are so small that, well, here's how, here's how we treat them anyway, ideally. Particles of gas are so small that their individual particle size is completely negligible, and we treat it as zero when we compare it to the container that the gas is in, unless the container is really, really tiny, and then the size of the gas particles might come into play. That's when we treat gases really instead of ideally. No kidding. Particles are in constant motion. So we think that particles are moving all the time, and because of that movement, what they're doing is colliding with the walls of their container, and that exerts pressure. Gas particles exert no, this is what we believe, no interactions between each other. They're not attracted to one another, ideally, and they're not repelled by one another. Is that really true? No, it's not really true. Actually, gases can actually be attracted to and separated from each other based on certain charges that they might have and polarities. But we don't take that into account when we treat gases ideally. And then the fourth postulate of the kinetic molecular theory is that, and this is a really good one, this is very important to know, that kinetic energy is proportional to temperature. So that means when the temperature goes up on gas molecules, what's going to happen is their kinetic energy is going to increase. They're going to start to move a lot faster. And if the temperature goes down, of course, the particles slow down, and that decreases their average kinetic energy. That's average kinetic energy. So what we can do with that is we can say, okay, well, wait a minute. Here's something else we know about kinetic energy. Kinetic energy equals, now, don't get freaked out by this formula. Kinetic energy equals one-half mv squared, right? And then classically, that v can be turned into a fancy kind of written u sort of thing, looking thing, that in, uh, uh, in that Greek is actually a mu, mu. So this is one-half m mu squared, but it's still velocity or speed, right? So kinetic energy equals one-half m mu squared. And if we actually took the kinetic, kinetic energy of an entire group of gas molecules, let's say one mole of them, if you had an Avogadro's number of them, we would just apply, uh, uh, multiply, ek equals one half mv squared, and then multiply that by number de Avogadro. Mm -hmm. So that's Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to 23 things per mole. So the unit is one over moles. Here it comes. Watch this. If we take the other formula that you don't necessarily know, maybe, that kinetic energy also equals 3 halves RT. If you put those two together, those two formulas, you're going to get that 1 half m mu squared t times Avogadro's number equals 3 halves RT. And if you rearrange to solve for the speed, velocity, you get this formula. You get mu squared equals 3 halves RT over Avogadro's number times mass. And that mass, of course, is in kilograms because that is the unit there for mass in that kinetic energy formula. But the really cool thing is, look at this, that if you say, well, you know what, I want to solve for speed, not the square of the speed. And that's the square of the average velocity of the particles. So if we take the square root of that side, you know what happens. We get rid of this and we put the square root there. And now this thing right here is called the root mean squared velocity. What a word. <laughs> what a term. Root mean square velocity. And we take the square root of this side, recognizing that this right here is mass times 1 over moles. That's the unit here. And mass times 1 over moles, mass over moles, that's grams per mole, well, kilograms per mole in this case, but that's the molar mass. So if you take the molar mass of a chemical in kilograms per mole, we'll put big M for molar mass, you get a real cool formula that we can do some calculations with.